In New York City, the rent increase approved by the Rent Guidelines Board is actually a loss. I'm Tony, and this is Real Estate Investing and Landlord News. All right, so I have an interesting article for you today, and it has to do with the rent increase that was approved by the Rent Guidelines Board. Now, I know I have already covered this story, but I found another interesting article by a landlord group up in New York City who has a little bit more insight than me, just some random guy in Omaha, Nebraska who hates rent control, okay? Now, obviously, everyone's opinion counts, but I like to take the opinion of those people who are directly affected by these sort of laws into consideration, you know, and I, I think this is a really good article, okay? It really goes over a lot of the problems with rent control and, you know, it goes over some of the issues that I talk about all the time, but coming from a local perspective. So yeah, this is a good thing, you know, I, I'm covering it again. I can never stop talking about New York because you know what? The laws in New York are so anti-landlord, they are the perfect example for the rest of the country of what not to do, okay? So before I get to the article, go ahead, hit the like, subscribe button, and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. So, do you think New York is the perfect example of what not to do in terms of you know laws to pass, etc.? Okay, like I think that a lot of the things that are happening in New York, they're being brought about by people who have strong socialist beliefs, okay? They want to move into either a system of socialism or communism and <laughs> you know that it, it's a losing formula it's a losing formula you can see the the effect that it would have and you know to all those people who are socialists out there I always want to ask them you know like what would be the motivation for somebody imagine that so socialism comes into place, right? What would be the motivation to work hard, to innovate? What would be the motivation, not just for the people who are like, you know, entrepreneurs, the people who make billions of dollars, but what is the motivation for somebody to do crap work? Okay, that's the real question because if you live in a communist country or a socialist country where the government is going to provide all of your needs, why would you want to be that guy out there shoveling garbage into the back of a trash can or picking up uh, boo-boo, you know? You have to give people financial incentive. And that is what motivates people to do stuff that other people would consider garbage. And if you look at communist countries, what they ended up doing was because people didn't want to be farmers, they didn't want to go out and toil in the fields and do that hard labor, they literally forced people to do it. OK, you can look at China, you can look at the history of Russia and see that is exactly what happened. They had to force people to go out there and do those hard jobs because nobody wanted to do them. <laughs> yeah, I, I could see all of these uh, socialists here in the U.S. suddenly being like, well, what, what do you mean I have to go out there and uh, work in the fields? They're like, well, you know what? Somebody has to do it or them providing housing for you and the only housing that the government providing for you being located in the middle of nowhere in uh let's say north dakota <laughs> okay like yes you you do, you you have a right to housing under our socialist system but it's in north dakota in the middle of nowhere and you have to toil in the fields like, <laughs> but they're too dumb to figure out that oh no no you're not going to get to live in the most exclusive area of midtown manhattan for pennies on the dollar under a true socialist system but anyway uh let me get into this article they're talking about the uh <laughs> recent rent increase that was approved by the rent guidelines board this article is coming from the new york post and it says do the math new york city's rent increase equals landlord losses and harms our housing let's get into it the data is indisputable Adjusting for inflation, the New York City Rent Guidelines Board and Mayor Adams' first three years has advanced rent adjustments that are more than twice as bad for rent-stabilized buildings as the rent adjustments advanced during the eight years under Bill de Blasio. Last month, the Rent Guidelines Board voted to allow rent increases of up to 2.75% for one-year leases and 5.25% for two-year leases. That means under the Adams Rent Guideline Board uh, rent adjustments, have averaged 
for percentage points below inflation over the last three years. Meanwhile, rent adjustments under de Blasio averaged 0.65 percentage points below inflation, according to the Rent Guidelines Board's calculations. So regardless of who the mayor was, right, basically what this author is saying is that the rent increases approved by the Rent Guidelines Board have not kept pace with inflation. And that is even keeping in mind that, hey, there wasn't this hyperinflation until very, very recently. So what does that tell you? That tells you that one, the rent guidelines board is not setting the rental rates for these rent controlled units based upon any sort of data or information. They don't care what the landlord's costs are. They don't care if the cost went up or down. The only thing they care about is, well, how, how do I feel? How do I feel? What are my emotions? Do I feel like the rent is too high? Well, if you ask a tenant, they always are going to feel like the rent is too high. It doesn't matter what the rent is. The rent could be free and they'd be like, nope, it's too high. You need to pay me to stay here. You know, that that's the truth, okay? So if they are not using data and actual information in order to set what the rental rates are, what the rental increases can be, then it's a complete farce. Even if you use the data, right? Every landlord has individual Ba on an individual basis, inflation can be different, okay? For one landlord, inflation is going to be a lot higher than for another landlord because this landlord might have a fixed interest rate on the building and this one does not. This landlord over here has an insurance company that gives him good rates because he has, you know, hundreds of units. This one only has a, a couple dozen units and he doesn't get the good insurance rate. And so he gets a higher increase. And so his inflation is higher than this landlord over here. So basically what I'm saying is that there is absolutely no way that some board composed of a few people can make a decision on how much of a rent increase is necessary or how much inflation that each landlord in the entire city has uh, experienced inflation. There's absolutely no way. It's impossible and they are wasting their time. They're wasting our time and the only thing this really has to do with is the emotions of those people who are setting this, right? Like, oh, how, how are the tenants going to feel if they get a big rent increase well you know what they're paying so far below market and even with this tiny increase they're still complaining so that should give you a good feeling of how the tenants are gonna feel no matter what the rent increase is <clears throat> So while rent increases have been authorized in each of the past three years, the net effect on older rent stabilized buildings, which provide the majority of affordable housing in the city, has been worse. This data flies in the face of the narrative being pushed by Adams opponents who have been shouting from the roots, rooftops that the mayor is raising the rents. We understand the frustrations that come with inflation. Our members have seen the cost of everything associated with building maintenance go up dramatically in the past three years, while rent increases fail to keep pace. Data may take a backseat to vibes in this day and age, but the operators of the largest swath of affordable housing in New York City can't run their buildings on vibes. Yep, and absolutely correct, right? You cannot run your buildings unless you get paid you cannot operate these buildings without them falling apart, okay? And that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing these buildings with tons, and I mean a ton, of deferred maintenance. And yeah, the city is coming in and they're fining them, but you know what? It's cheaper to pay the fines than actually try to fix the unit when if you fix the unit, you're never going to get your investment back, okay? So this is creating a situation where, hey, a lot of these landlords are being called slumlords for not fixing their buildings up. Well, you created it. You know, the people who want their cheap rents, they created the slumlords. I mentioned this before in another video. If you don't want to pay rent and you prevent the landlord from being able to raise the rent, and then you're surprised that there's a ton of deferred maintenance, that things are falling apart, that the building, you know, uh, they, they won't do repairs. Well, that's just the way it's going to be, okay? We do repairs with the money that we make in cash flow. And if we don't have any money in cash flow, we can't do repairs. <laughs> it's pretty simple. So yeah, uh, they're gonna band-aid the thing back together the best they can. They're going to drag it on and drag it out for as long as possible before they do anything. And I can't blame them. My uh, only 
argument would be, well, you knew the game when you got into it, okay? You knew that this place was under rent control. You knew that the cash flow was super slim in here. So what was your, your game plan? What was the strategy? What was the reason you thought this is gonna be a good investment, right? And the only thing I could think would be appreciation, right? So you have to sit in there, take a loss for X number of years, and then be able to sell the property at a higher price than you paid for it, make all of your losses back, hopefully, hopefully, and a bit more on top of that. And I know some people play that game. I don't, I, I like to make cash flow and appreciation. I don't like to make just appreciation. And I know there are big, big winners involved. You know, the only other uh, strategy I could think that would use, you know, these these properties where they're losing money is, Basically, maybe you have a landlord who has a very high taxable income and to lower their tax bill, they take on these losses on purpose. Okay, I've heard of stuff like that, you know, like, oh, I'm going to take these losses on and, you know, eventually I'll be able to get my money back or, you know, tax free, of course, because you're going to 1031 exchange it into something that is actually profitable. But um <laughs> i can write off all the losses that these buildings have I don't, you know i don't know i don't know you know like it, it's kind of a crazy topic altogether but i'm gonna skip down a little bit in this article right and uh he says that since inflation has increased by 23 percent over the past decade per rgb calculations and rents have only increased by a cumulative 14 percent income has re been reduced by nine percent from a landlord landlord's point of view. And absolutely, okay? Your income overall in general has decreased. So what does this mean? You know, looking into the future, what does this mean? Well, there's gonna be fewer players, there's gonna be fewer uh, people who want to deal with that sort of property. And I can't blame them, I mean, I think that you're going to have trouble getting financing from banks, honestly. I think that a lot of banks are really going to take a good look at that stuff and be like, hey, I'm not going to touch it. So we heard about, you know, a few months back how they almost had a bunch of banks collapse. Well, this is the sort of thing, these, these commercial real estate deals that don't cash flow, that are losing money and can only have the potential to lose more money. Well, those are the things that are causing entire banks to fail, you know? And I don't see a long-term winning strategy, you know, in, in New York with these rent-controlled units. I just don't, okay? As I've mentioned before, my strategy is don't invest there. And I will continue to say that to anyone. I mean, I don't, I don't care if, you know, you're, you're a big landlord or a small landlord. I just think that it isn't worth your time, okay? It isn't worth the struggles, you know, jumping through all the hoops that the city wants you to jump through.